All right, man, I'm all packed up for Mammoth. Didn't you want to show all the stuff in the pack on gear chasing? Ah, shit. Hey guys, welcome to Gear Tasting. Today I'm going to be going over my Mammoth loadout for this year's Mammoth Sniper Challenge. And if you haven't heard me talk about the Mammoth Sniper Challenge before, it is a two-person competitive shooting event uh, using precision rifle. You have a shooter and a spotter, or a primary and a secondary. Everybody shoots uh, out of that two-man team. But you are hiking with everything you need for the better part of three days on your back, along with ammo and the gun and everything. So through the process of elimination, I have come to my loadout here that you see in front of you. But what I'd like to do first before I get into the nitty gritty of what I'm taking, I wanted to show you kind of the, the math behind why I'm taking what I'm taking. So let's get right into that. Okay, so as you can see, I have weights all over this board and this is never a bad thing to do with all your gear. I would highly recommend it, especially if you're into lightweight backpacking and events that really test you in terms of what you have to carry. So my ideal weight that I wanted to get to was roughly 40 pounds and I almost achieved that. Um, I've cut just about everything that I felt like I could reasonably cut and I got down to 44 and a half pounds. So that was my target weight was 40. I got to 44 and a half. I'm pretty good with that considering last year I carried 53 pounds and I was hurting. So I've almost uh, dropped that by about 10 pounds this year. So I'm pretty happy with that. So anyway, as you saw just a second ago, I'm carrying all this in a large ruck, uh, Alice pack ruck system. Um, it's the one I came back from the Navy with. It's been a bomb-proof pack. I don't want to sacrifice that. Yes, it's a heavy pack. You can see here I've got it at 6.22 pounds, which is crazy. So everything's in ounces as well as pounds in some places with this. Um, pounds was just a rating to get me to kind of an overall poundage weight. I wanted to know kind of what I had on my back, so to speak. But the thing this year, as compared to last year, there's a little bit of a difference, and I've, we've kind of tried to exploit that with my myself and my shooting partner's loadout is that this year Mammoth gave us the choice of either carrying our food or carrying our tent. So we have a two person tent we're sharing and that's what we're letting them carry because it's you know roughly five, five pound tent or so in there. Um, so what we're going to do is go with food. Now I have roughly 93 ounces which is like five pounds something in food and that might have been something to weigh, you know, do we want them to carry food? But so the thing about food is you don't really have them carry all your food and you just ask for it when you want to. You start out the day carrying your day's rations and then at the end of the night they bring by a cooler and it's a literally, they give you a, a specific quart size that you can carry up to, they'll carry up to. And at the end of the day, you get your next day's rations from the cooler, so on and so forth, and you replace them in your pack. So you're still carrying food weight during the day, it's just not as much. But we opted to carry food ourselves rather than the tent because as you eat food, it's going to get lighter. And so we've ca I've calculated this out and just taking away the food that I'm going to eat, by day three, I'm going to be down to 40.69 pounds. So as you can see, food dwindles, weight gets lighter, so on and so forth. That's the better way, in my opinion, to do it. So um, what I've, I've kind of grouped this into like a pack system, shelter system, sleep system, hygiene system, cook system, food. Um, some extras which I'm not taking, clothing that I'm carrying, firearm system as a whole, some miscellaneous gear and medical. So, and then we have some team weight items too. So we've got a spotting scope that we have as well as a tripod for the spotting scope that's a team weight type thing. So um, I wanted to kind of just roughly show you where I started and where I got down to. So whenever I listed all the gear I was taking onto this board, I was at 49.2 pounds. So through the process of elimination, really trying to figure out, do I really need this? Do I not need to? And I've gotten pretty good at that tactic. I've, I've gone backpacking. I've done mammoth already a year. So what I started with wasn't bad. Uh, it just weighed 49.2 pounds. And I knew I could be lighter. So I know I probably could still be lighter, but there's a lot of creature comforts on this list I'm not willing to give up. So I've got four pair of socks that I'm carrying on me. And that's a lot of socks for a lot of different people. But to me, last year, with just the way that I interacted with the event, I wanted more socks and I'm going to take them this year. So that was kind of, this is kind of my you know, personal item type thing. So, and I, I'm not gonna go through everything on this list. I think it's easier to show you down here with all the gear laid out rather than referring to a whiteboard. 
So let's go back to the exploded view and I'll show you some of the equipment I'm taking. Okay guys, so back to the exploded view. What I have is just basically the way that my pack dumped out as I took gear out. So what I wanted to kind of visually show you is I left the sleeping bag in one of these dry bags because I have like a two dry bag system. So basically everything in the middle here fits into the pockets on my Alice pack. Everything to the right of this line, uh, not counting food, food is separate, but everything to the your left of this line uh, goes into this dry bag. All the clothing and everything up to the meals here goes into my other dry bag. So the way that the reason I use two dry bags is because it's very easy to get into those if I need to, but I've also primed a lot of this stuff for the things that I need on a regular basis to be accessible in the Alice pack with, without having to get into these dry bags. So that's my goal is to not have to do that necessarily. So the basically the way I wanted to kind of break this down is to talk through a little bit of, about each system. As I mentioned on the whiteboard, I've got specific systems and it's just an easy way for me to think about this. So pack system, like I said, I started to get into that a little bit on the video, but I can't really compromise weight on the Alice pack. I've, I've pretty much got this down to pretty much the lightest weight that I can. Um, the ground pad that I have is a Thermarest Ridge Rest and it's only 14 ounces. It's, it's pretty much one of the lightest weight uh, to our value rated uh, ground pads out there on the market, just in terms of lightweight. They also make, Thermarest also makes a Z-Rest, which is a great ground pad as well. It's a little bit easier to trim down if you want to cut it shorter. I opted not to have a cut ground pad just because the weather in Park City, which is the closest place to, to Kentucky where we're going to be shooting, um, is not supposed to get above freezing during the day and at night it's supposed to get down to about 14 degrees. So I'm really kind of added a lot of things that I normally wouldn't take on something like this just because of the temperature. So temperature is always going to dictate how heavy your loadout is. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. So basically what I've got is a lot of different pieces from the PCU system that I've talked about on ITS before. I'll make sure that we link to that article in case you're interested. And that's the protective combat uniform. It's a military issue system. It's a seven layer system. You don't necessarily wear all seven layers, but uh, it basically handles any climate down to like negative 50. So with specific mix, mixing and matching of layers, it, you can achieve that. So I've got a level one and level two bottoms um, that I'm gonna wear. Level two bottoms are for night for sleeping if I need them. Um, like I said, I've got a lot of socks. Um, just kind of keep going through clothing here. I've got an Arteryx shell. I've got an Arteryx Atom jacket. So what worked really well for me yesterday, and I'll, I'll show actually what I'm starting out wearing uh, versus what's here. So I may wear the Atom jacket along with what I show you in a minute, which is kind of my on-body gear, which is not represented here, just to kind of get that out of the way. So I've also packed a down beanie as long as, along with a balaclava that's kind of made out of this same waffle grid material um, that I'm going to use as a neck gaiter because that's something I sorely missed last year was a good neck gaiter when the temperature dropped. Um, I've also got a Patagonia down jacket, a full down jacket that packs pretty small. It's only about eight ounces, which is awesome. Uh, some of the lightest weight uh, per ratio in terms of down gear out there. I've got some over gloves that I'm wearing from OR because my hands got extremely cold last year. I don't want that to happen again. So I've got some leather gloves um, from Arteryx that I'm going to be wearing kind of on a, a regular basis. And then I'll switch to basically wearing these once it gets a little colder and I need them as I see fit. Um, so again, down beanie, balaclava, um, Adam jacket. This is the Arteryx shell underneath that that I've got. And then kind of moving on, it's the down jacket. And then all that fits into this dry bag here. I really love these Sea to Summit bags. These are ultra sill nylon bags. Um, they're only about 1.7 to 1.9 ounces depending on I actually have two different weighting, weight ratings there, but they're super lightweight, they're waterproof, they're some of the best things on the market in terms of, um, I guess, feature to weight ratio. Um, then kind of moving into the middle here before I get over there, I've got my weight, um, my ammo kind of individually bagged. I'm shooting a 6.5 Creedmoor and I've talked about this pretty extensively on gear tasting. Um, this is an accurate ordnance build that I had that I've kind of detailed the steps throughout the gear tasting on. A full article is coming, especially after I use it at Mammoth this year on just kind of how well it performed. So it's got a Night Force SHV scope on the top. 
Uh, it's a stiller action, like I said, custom built by Accurate Ordnance. And then I've also got a rear bag that I've got too. It's a pretty lightweight rear bag in terms of the fill that's inside of it. So I try to find something super lightweight. And then going along here, I've got a Nalgene and that's one thing that I'm kind of making a concession on this year. Last year I used a source bladder to hold water and I used that as, as I hiked. So the hikes between stages range anywhere from a mile and a half, two miles to five miles. So by the, by the time I think everything was said and done last year, we put in about 43 miles over the three days. So there's a considerable amount of rucking and it's a, it's a, strange, it's a strange thing because you're going from kind of an active environment to a completely passive environment. So you're active when you're, you're hiking and then you get to the stage and you go through a stage brief and you're super passive. So you're waiting sometimes an hour to shoot sometimes at stages, uh, depending on how many teams there are and how many uh, different teams are ahead of you and where you fit in that, that roster of shooting. So being passive, that's kind of why I have extra layers too. If I was moving the whole time, I probably wouldn't take as much in terms of clothing just because I wouldn't need it. I'd be, you know, sweating and all that good stuff. So, you know, like last year, as soon as I got back from a ruck, I would throw on the Adam jacket immediately so that that perspiration could work its way through there and kind of help, uh, help with the cooling and the warmth too. So anyway, I've got a pair of Howard Late Ear Pro. These are super lightweight. They're about 10 ounces, which is much lighter than my Sordans. And that's what I'm going to go with this year because I tried to just go with uh, the Surefire earplugs last year and I couldn't hear my partner's calls for spotting. So that's something I'm fixing this year. That's extra weight that I have to kind of deal with. Um, then I've got, you know, my 6.5 Creedmoor rounds. I've got about 90 rounds. I did have 100. I cut 10 of them, which saved me about 7.8 ounces. And that's actually kind of a big deal when we were talking about cutting five pounds that contributed to it. Um, I only shot 76 rounds last year and I expect to shoot more this year, but you know, I, I really just, I didn't want to, I just didn't want to keep increasing my, my round count. So that, that weight is going to go down over the week too, because, or through the weekend as I shoot, um, you know, those rounds are going to become nothing too. I am saving my brass though. So I guess it's, you know, not a huge weight savings. I will try to save my brass. I don't know. I didn't save it last year. So anyway, so I'm going with P mags this year. Uh, there's a metal mag. This is an accurate mag that is super heavy and I want to just show the difference between them. Um, going with a P mag. These are the 762 P mags that will work with the 65 rounds and they're super lightweight. Uh, I got a Kestrel with applied ballistics that I'm using for my ballistic calculations as well as a SIG uh, Kilo 2000 rangefinder. That's what I'm using for the rangefinder. I've got a, uh, a bag to sit on because we had to sit in some mud last year so I'm bringing this and <laughs> sacrificing the two ounces that it weighs just so I have something to sit on if I need to. I've got an emergency blanket in case it gets super cold. I will bundle up with that. I've got an EDC trauma kit in case somebody gets shot. I've got uh, my DOP kit, which I significantly decreased uh, from last year. I took a lot of unnecessary stuff. Um, one of these days I'll talk about DOP kits on gear tasting. I think it's kind of a cool topic. And then I've got that lightweight pillow I talked about on the last gear tasting from Sea to Summit. I've got a titanium spork, a notepad, a pen and a pencil both from, uh, well, Wright and Rain made the pencil. Then I've got um, my shit kit. So I've got some hand sanitizer and wipes. Uh, and then I've got kind of a, a modified boo-boo kit uh, with some Luco tape that I cut for blister stuff. I like to treat my hot spots as I go rather than wait until they develop into blisters. That's just a wrote an article on that I will link to too in case you're interested in foot care stuff. I've got my first sock change ready to go so that's in my pack in an accessible location. I've got a headlamp and I can never remember the Princeton Tech model this is but I will link to it in the description. Then I've got a pack of waterproof matches in case my stove doesn't light with my lighter and my backup ear pro just in case. Then I've got uh, the Nemo sleeping bag that I mentioned earlier. This is a 15 degree bag, so I'm giving this a shot this time um, versus I've normally got a, a 35 degree bag, a Phantom 35 that I had, and I'm looking forward to having a warmer bag this year. And I'm paying for it in weight, but you know, it is what it is. 
I'm using a <clears throat> excuse me MSR reactor uh, wind burner. That's what it's called. MSR wind burner for my stove this year. <laughs> I'm sure you guys got a kick out of my gear tasting on that when I did that. Um, I've got a fuel canister. I'm just taking one. And then the big thing this year that I'm doing with food is I'm eating a lot more. So that was one of my big lessons learned from last year is I was roughly at 1700 calories when I added it all up and that's just way too, way, not enough to eat uh, with the kind of exertion that we're doing. We're probably burning 2500 to 3000 calories at least per day. So especially with all that rucking. So my calorie count right now with my food per day is roughly around 2800, 2700 to 2800. Um, so that's kind of where I'm, where I'm at ballpark. And everything is going to be cooked through boiling water in the MSR stove and then uh, cooking food from, I've got some backpackers pantry stuff, I've got some mountain house, I've got some good to go food as well as paleo meals to go. So I'm kind of covered the gamut of uh, different manufacturers. I'm trying out some different food this year. I don't really like to do that, but at the same time, I'm a big pad thai junkie and I've got Two, at least two different kinds of pad thai to, to try too, um, as well as I'm giving sc scrambled eggs a shot in the morning. I'm really not in the best of moods about that, but it is what it is. And I'm going to try to make some coffee with the Starbucks Via packets every morning. We'll see how that works out. I may just completely ditch that idea. I'm not sure yet. Um, but anyway, so my calorie count per day kind of sustains what I was talking about, and that's kind of where we're at with that. So let's jump real quick to kind of what I have on my body for loadout, and I'll kind of show you what I'm starting out with uh, as far as boots and clothing and things like that, which is all this is going to supplement that when I make changes. Okay, so one last thing that I forgot to talk about when I was talking about kind of my overall loadout is team gear. So we're kind of figuring out team weight right now, and what we've got for team weight is a tripod and the spotting scope. This is the Bushnell T-Series, I think, Legend T-Series, and T stands for tactical or something like this, but what I've done is I've actually removed some of the rail panels that were on the top and sides of this thing to save weight, and I've also kind of added um, a little dummy cord for both the caps so that if the front cap comes off and the back cap comes off, they stay put. So that was something I definitely wanted to do so we didn't lose any lens caps this year. Not that we did last year, but so... The thing we're doing with that is, like I said, just kind of figuring out team weight, but we do need to take that stuff and it's important to do. I kind of used an old school tripod I had. This is not the best tripod out there by any means, but it's one of the lightest that I could find anywhere. So I got this thing down to 15 ounces. I, no, 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 that's not right. Two pounds. I got down to two pounds, two ounces, I think. That's right. And even so, some of the tripods you'll see on the market right now, even the carbon fiber ones, are still in the, the four to five pound range. So extremely lightweight. Um, I'm still looking for alternatives, obviously, because it's not the best in terms of stability, and that's what you want in a tripod. So there is a little bit of sacrifice there, and we'll have, I'll have to tell you how that goes. All right, so the next thing, this is all the on-body stuff. So. Uh, I've talked about these trekking poles before. These are some I got off Amazon. I'm, I've used a couple of times now. Um, I'm ditching these caps that I talked about. I got through one hike with them and hated them, and now they're gone. Um, so I'm going back to them just being a protective cover while they're in travel, basically. So these are carbon fiber. They're super lightweight. I think they're 15 ounces, which is very lightweight for hiking poles, and I'm looking forward to using them. Um, I had a little bit of an issue, which I can talk about kind of in a recap to kind of tell you more about how they did with all this gear too, uh, after the fact when I come back from Mammoth. But so I'm wearing the Arteryx Sphinx pants. These are um, Tweave and I love these things. I've had these for years. They've been solid performers and I'm not gonna kind of change this up on game day. Um, and then I'm also, this year I'm adding a level one PCU uh, bottom. So I'll wear those the whole time uh, this year just because of the temperature that it's going to be. Um, this is an OR top. It's kind of a wool mix with synthetic, and that's what I'll be wearing for my top. And like I said, I may start with that Atom jacket, depending on how I do, because as soon as I get under a ruck and I get moving, it's going to get hot, so I may just 
forego the Atom jacket and put that on immediately when I stop. Um, I've got a Liger belt that I've sworn by for years I'm wearing, uh, a pair of darn tough Vermont socks, and my Loa Renegades, which I absolutely love. I did a little bit um, differently this year. So I've got the, the green inserts inside of those, and that's what I roll with. But this year I used Nick Wax uh, waterproofing for leather. I love leather boots, but the only thing I don't like about those is that they're susceptible to getting wet. And I don't want that to happen. I don't want my feet to get wet. So I also have some Matic dry socks from Arteryx that are, it's kind of a game day choice. Meaning if there's rain in the forecast, I'm going to add those in, which will add another four ounces into my pack. So I don't want to have to do that, but that's going to be, like I said, a game day decision. So this is the uh, waterproofing wax. This is just a sample pack, but one of these did both boots. So I'm looking forward to kind of seeing how that does on my boots. And then I've got these Arteryx gloves that I'm wearing pretty much the whole time. Um, an OR Windstopper beanie. This is one of the best things on the market. If you're in the market for a beanie, I would highly recommend these for any kind of activity. So static, not passive. Uh, static activity, I really love these things. Um, they stop wind and they're super insulative. Then I've just got a really lightweight cloth that I found at REI that I'm just going to use to wipe sweat and things like that when I'm actively hiking. And then I've got a climb on lip tube. This is uh, the best stuff out there that I've found for dry cracked hands as well as lips. So I can also apply this to my face and things like that to prevent wind burn. So definitely great stuff if you're in the market for that. Instead of carrying a full size pocket knife, I'm going to carry a Leatherman squirt. Um, and then I'm also going to carry my mini Bic to light my stove in my pocket to kind of help it stay warmer rather than um, carrying it with my kit and let it get cold. Not that there's anything wrong with using a cold Bic, but it's just something I want to do. So I've also got kind of a, a lock sack bag to keep some stuff waterproof if I need to. Like I'll have my driver's license and some cash and things like that that you'd normally take. And I'll probably also have my phone as well to take pictures. Uh, I had my phone on airplane mode the whole time last year and it, it lasted for battery while I was taking pictures. So that's probably what I'll roll with again this year. So again, this is my on body gear in addition to what I have in my pack. Hey guys, thanks for watching Gear Tasting. So hopefully you enjoyed my extensive overview of my loadout. I wanted to kind of walk through not only what I was taking, but a little bit of an explanation as to the why of what I was taking. Um, obviously the big thing is going to be when I come back, I'll talk about you know, what I did use and what I didn't use and how it performed. And I would highly recommend any kind of trip that you go on personally that when you come back from it, you put your stuff into three different piles. So have a pile of stuff that you took that you used, have a pile of stuff that you took and didn't use, and then a pile of stuff that you took but was a necessity. So things like a trauma kit. You might not have used that on your trip, but if you're shooting, you know that you needed to have it just in case, so you wouldn't really want to remove that on your next trip. So as always, if you have any questions, use the pound tag Gear Tasting on any social media network. I will answer your questions here on Gear Tasting in future episodes. Obviously, I didn't get to questions this time because we had a lot to cover, and thanks for watching.